To be a Trojan, to be part of something bigger than ourselves, is to be transformed. And the key is in our minds, and it is in our hearts. Rick Caruso lives his life with a very passionate heart. His passion is the kind that embraces and inspires all of us. Through words and even more so through actions, Rick and his wife, Tina, elevated the University of Southern California and our city in extraordinary ways. Rick's passion for his work is impossible to miss if you have been to the Grove. It was exactly my fellow Trojans 15 years ago that his crown jewel first attracted us to visit, to play, stay, ride the trolley, see a movie, have an ice cream, and enjoy a meal. Shopping, by the way, was not required, but we shopped anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> so the annual 100-foot Christmas tree first astonished us, and then became a very special tradition, a West Coast rival to the Rockefeller Centers. The open-air destination in the heart of the Fairfax district was like a moonshot, rising so fast and so dramatically that it reshaped our city's retail landscape almost overnight. People said blending retail and housing was too tricky, but for Rick, it was all about creating a sense of place when Main Street meant the center of a community. His vision hasn't changed. It was all driven by people, he says. I love being around people. His mission hasn't changed either. He's out to re-energize LA's neighborhoods by looking to the idyllic past when lifestyles were simpler and a sense of optimism was in the air. The Grove and a second property, the Americana brand, each attract millions more visitors a year than Disneyland. But Rick's life is so much more than that. His story starts right here in LA with his father, Hank Caruso, who founded Dollar Rent a Car more than 50 years ago. The first indication Mr. Caruso had that his son was passionate about real estate came when Rick was five years old. From a grassy field next to their Truesdale Estates home, the two surveyed the breathtaking view below them, where the palm trees of Beverly Hills stretched out to the mid Wilshire districts, new 22 story Union Bank building. He looked out. Hank Caruso remembers and said, Dad, see all these buildings there? I own all these buildings. <laughs> and I said, oh, that's wonderful, Rick. He said, yeah, see the big one over there? The real tall one? I'm going to give that to you. <laughs> A little boy's imagination would become his driving force in life. It's in Rick Caruso's DNA to take care of people, but I can tell you it's also in his DNA to lead. It started years ago. One Trojan fraternity brother remembers Rick as always wanting to help others and always getting his fraternity brothers to join him. Rick earned a bachelor's degree with honors from USC Marshall. Then, as a favor to his dad, he went to law school and joined one of the country's largest firms. When the firm unexpectedly went bankrupt, Rick took a bold risk and returned to his childhood passion, buildings. And he never looked back. The same passion 
has made him a leader in business and in civic affairs. On a personal note, Ricaruso not only is one of our most steadfast advisors on the Board of Trustees, but he is a man of his word and a man of action. He knows how to get things done. Never was his public leadership and courage more on display than when he was president of the Police Commission. By the time Rick stepped down in 2003, the LAPD had a new chief, William Bratton, in a city moving forward. Bratton would go on to successfully reform the department and restore its luster. Rick had been brought in for his management skills and left a very high standard for his successors to match. He also left knowing he did everything he could for the city he loves. The love for LA comes through not only in his work, but in how he gives back. His philanthropy is a generosity based on love for people and for the human spirit. Rick credits his time at USC for helping him to develop as a person, one who sees generosity as a profound act of courage. This is why he and Tina give back so broadly and often anonymously, especially to education. It changes lives, theirs included. To that end, Tina and Rick founded the Caruso Family Foundation, dedicated in part to supporting organizations that improve lives of at-risk children. At USC, he and Tina quietly give their money, time, and expertise to many causes, from the Colosseum to Heritage Hall to our Price School of Public Policy to our Norris Cancer Center to CHLA, the Children's Hospital, Los Angeles. Two years ago, they endowed the USC Rick and Tina Caruso Department of otolaryngology at our Keck School of Medicine. Their daughter Gianna struggled with hearing loss since birth. USC doctors dramatically improved her ability to hear the world around her and changed her life. The Caruso's passion to help others extends to their faith. My faith gives me hope, says Rick. A previous naming gift established the USC Caruso Catholic Center and helped build our Savior Parish Church. Earlier this year, Pope Francis honored Rick for his extraordinary life of service for those in need. Rick, Tina, and the entire Caruso family embody philanthropists, nobles, and purest ambition a love for humanity. They give back because they care deeply for people. They see a need and they see a way to help others. They step up and they make a difference. We salute tonight their compassion. We salute their vision. And tonight, of course, we salute their Trojan spirit. USC prepared this brief video tribute, so let's watch it together. Rick is clearly one of the most charismatic people you will ever meet. He's also one of the most genuine people you will ever meet. The most powerful combination of head and heart I have ever seen in one man. He started school at SC in 1976, and it was a really special time in his life. He loves being down there, he loves the people, he just wants to make it the best school it can be. Rick's leadership skills have always been apparent. When we were students at USC, the fraternity elected him president. Student service organizations elected him their president. John Ferraro asked him to be the president of the LADWP when he was 26 years old. Mayor Hahn asked him to be the president of the police commission. 
one of his things he almost tells me every day is there's a solution to every problem. That inspires me about him and how he looks at life that way. Never give up. Civic duty is a huge part of my father's life. That sense of care to give back to the community has been a cornerstone of his company and of his, his life. Rick is the epitome of the saying that with great success comes great responsibility. He so deeply feels his commitment to the city, to improving it, improving the lives of the people that live here. He and Tina decided that he would try his hand at real estate development. They bought a little duplex in Westwood and took care of it themselves. They operated from an office that was nothing more than a card table in their home. And look what he's built since then. My dad is okay with taking risks. He's taken a lot of risks by engaging in the development that previously people would have been scared to go through with. He cares about what the community thinks. Before he starts a project, he goes in the neighborhood, he meets with homeowners, he wants feedback, he thrives on feedback. Properties like the Americana and the Grove, they become icons of the city. He always says going to work isn't work. He's found something in his job where it's really a vocation. He loves people. He's very gregarious and outgoing. By being able to build shopping centers and housing developments and now a hotel, it takes all he loves about humanity and different areas of the world that we've traveled. He wants to make these shopping centers feel like a home for people when they go there and they feel safe and they can be with their family and be with their friends, go get dinner and have that whole sense of community. One of his greatest attributes is his sense of hospitality, to make people feel welcomed and wanted. And I think that's why he's so successful in what he does. He tries to create that experience of hospitality. He just wants to give his time to everyone. He's always there for the kids. I know even if he's working, if any of them call him or if I do, he's definitely there for us and for his friends and anyone who's in need. I think that's what's very special about him. The Trojan spirit is defined by alumni, like my dad. He always says there's no reason why USC should be second to anyone. That's the SC spirit of never settling for anything less than the best. My grandfather went there as well. That sense of pride and legacy combined with his experience has fueled him to say, I want to be involved with USC the rest of my life and I want to be a proactive alum. I remember the moment that the doctors at this university first made it possible for Rick's daughter Gianna to hear raindrops. The first thing that Rick and Tina thought of was, how do we make this possible for other children? He is committed to the Tina and Rick Caruso Department of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery and our Caruso Center for Childhood Communication. We're bringing the world of hearing, we're bringing speech and language to children who otherwise wouldn't have it. Rick is also tremendously committed to advancing science, discovery science, and translational science in hearing. He's a big supporter of our regenerative medicine effort, where we're trying to regenerate little sensory cells. Rick's support is helping us find a way to end hearing loss. The USC Caruso Catholic Center provides a home for our students and for the community as a whole. A sanctuary within a sanctuary where people just feel like they can just come and be and recollect for a moment in the hustle and bustle of the day. Rick is a authentically kind person who cares, and that has impact locally and globally. I know Rick Caruso through a scholarship program called Operation Progress. Operation Progress changes communities through education and mentoring. Without Rick's big heart, I wouldn't be as invested as I am in my academics or as optimistic as I am of the future. He has really impacted my life for the better. He's one of the few people that will stand up for something and does it for the greater good of other people. He's been an unbelievable mentor. His level of care, compassion, empathy for the people that he encounters is something that's so deeply inspired me. Rick has always been driven by his faith, his commitment to family, friends, philanthropy. Rick has been one of the most transformational and effective leaders this city has ever known. His courage and leadership is profound. So before, before I bring Rick up, I would like to introduce his beautiful family. They are a true Trojan family, and they are all with us tonight. Rick is joined by Tina, sons Alex, Greg, and Justin, and their daughter Gianna. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. 
The journalist, Pat Morrison, once asked Rick about the statues at the Grove of children playing. His children were the models. Are they embarrassed, she asked. They're always embarrassed, Rick answered. <laughs> but I can see the greens on their faces. I hope they will one day walk their kids through these properties and say, your grandpa built this, and that's how old I was. That's my gift. So my fellow Trojans, I have the privilege and distinct honor of presenting the USC Alumni Association's highest honor, the Asa V. Cole Alumni Achievement Award to Mr. Rick Caruso. <laughs> Quite an introduction, Max. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody, and particularly the Alumni Association, for tonight. You do remarkable work that supports this university, and that work does not go unnoticed. I'm appreciative of your confidence in giving me this honor, and I'm very humbled by it. And I want to congratulate all of the honorees tonight my God, what an exceptional group of people. And as I was sitting there, just the thought of having to follow all of you was actually horrifying. <laughs> but here I am. Before I get into my comments, I do want to reflect back for just one second. I was at this dinner back in 2005. I was here actually with the same group of friends who I love back in 2005 that are here tonight. And when I walked by the auction earlier tonight, I had this horrific feeling in my gut. And let me tell you why. Unbeknownst to me, there was something that was on the silent auction. And my friends had a plan. They had a rotation system. And every five minutes, they would go back into the room. And if somebody else would have signed up for this gift, they would sign my name. So by the end of the evening, a wonderful lady came up to me and said, Mr. Crusoe, congratulations. You've won item number 372. You owe the university $18,500. And let me show you what they bought me. There it is. A 1957 BMW with a sidecar. And you can imagine how thrilled Tina used to be when I would take the kids for a ride. <laughs> I still own it to this day. When Max called me and said I had won the Ace of E. Cole Award, I said, oh my God, Max, I'll be there. I'm, I'm thrilled. But I said, tell me, was it a close vote? <laughs> and he said, look, don't ask too many questions. I had to use the nuclear option. <laughs> but whatever the circumstances, I'm glad to be here, and I swelled with pride. And again, I must admit, I thought back and I said, I don't know why I'm getting it, but maybe it's finally the recognition of my brilliant academic career. <laughs> so I immediately called to get a copy of my transcripts, and I want to put up my first semester's transcripts. I want you to notice I got straight A's. How about that? And then I want to put up the transcript after I joined a fraternity, and I got C's. I also want you to notice what classes those are. Real estate, legal, oh my god. 
And then I thought, all right, if it wasn't the academics, maybe it was my sense of great style when I was a student at USC. And there I am. Thank God for Tina. I don't have that mustache any longer. I made two smart decisions in my life that got me to where I am today. One of them was marrying Tina and together having four perfect children, and so I'm grateful for that. And the other I really had nothing to do with, but I'm going to take credit for it. I was born into an amazing family with great parents that sacrificed everything to raise good kids and instill a sense of purpose and an importance of education. They knew that education led to opportunities. And so more than anything, they made sure we all had a great education. And thank God, because of that, I came to USC. I was the first member of my family to get a college degree. And the person that really drilled home the message of education was my grandmother, little Josephine Caruso. And I think back to a quote that I read that was said by a man 40 years ago to the day at this dinner, John Wayne, who was being honored. And he had a great quote. Life is tough, but it's tougher if you're stupid. <laughs> that says it all. <laughs> now let me tell you something. Old Grandma Caruso would say the same thing. She came up to hear on me, small in frame, but boy, was she big in life and spirit and big in purpose. So I'm going to ask you to indulge me for a minute. I know it's been a long night, but I want to talk about her for just a second because there's a larger lesson. There she is. I'm about five, and we're about the same height. Both sets of my grandparents were immigrants, and they believed in education, but especially Grandma. She arrived here when she was 16, so she never had an education. She was the only one who spoke English and wrote in English. My grandfather could only speak broken English. It came from a little town called Reggio in Calabria, southern Italy. They went through Ellis Island. Then they moved to Uniontown where my grandfather had the wonderful job of being a dynamite worker in a coal mine, which is not a great long-term career path. <laughs> and my father was born in a mining camp there. But a family member, thankfully, convinced him to move to the West, and they settled in Boyle Heights, where my grandfather became a gardener. I used to work with him on the weekends. I think my love of landscaping and flowers and trees came from my grandfather. That was his gift to me, and it has shaped the way I've developed my properties. But my grandmother ran the family. Her kitchen was her kingdom, and her first words were always, have you eaten? She was tough, and she had expectations, and one of those was an education. She drilled in me that every generation needs to work hard to help the next generation, and then, you have to work to help those who are less fortunate. For somebody who had nothing, I was always amazed by her focus on others who were less fortunate. Now, I believe that Tommy Trojan, that stands in the center of our campus, symbolizes what my grandmother saw in education. She firmly believed that if you had an education, you were as ready, as strong, as courageous, as clear-eyed and as principled as that Trojan warrior. You were ready to handle whatever the world was going to throw at you and whatever life laid in front of you. If you went to a university, she believed that you emerged feeling on the inside the way he looked like on the outside. And I'm forever grateful to Grandma, who attended my graduation not far from that Trojan warrior. This is a great, great university. No university in the world is better. It's a remarkable place, not just because of the knowledge it imparts, 
but because of the larger person it creates. My grandparents and my parents helped create the person I am today, and so did USC. And for that, I am forever grateful and will be as long as I live. And I express my gratitude by doing what I can for those who are less fortunate, especially children, who deserve the same opportunity that my family and my great university gave me. Now, one of them is Jennifer, who you saw in the video tonight. She's a young girl that lives in the housing projects Nickerson Gardens in Watts. And because of her hard work, the hard work of the people in Operation Progress and the LAPD, she's been accepted to Boston College on a full academic scholarship. How about that? And she plans to be a doctor, and I believe she will. Now, there's so many other stories like Jennifer's, young people who are able to rise above their circumstances because people like you and so many others reach out and give them an education, encouragement, support, and love, and give them a chance to succeed. We all lead fast lives. We all lead productive lives. But no matter how fast our lives are, and I know so many in, you in this room do this, we need to pause, we need to lean back, we need to put out our hand and bring somebody along with us. I feel very honored and grateful tonight because of my education, because of USC, because of the great teachers I had when I was there. I was given an opportunity to succeed and to give back to those less fortunate. Life is so wonderful, but I really believe that the full beauty of life reveals itself through the eyes of those that you lift up. My life is full, and tonight makes me very happy because it's allowed me to pause and count my blessings, my faith, my family, my friends, and the school I love. So thank you to the Alumni Association and to all the great men and women of the University of Southern California that have worked so hard to shape the lives of so many young students. They're gonna make the world a better place. And a special thanks to my dear friend, Max Nikias, for his great leadership and his great wisdom for making the school so much better. Thank you very much. Thank you.